All right. Speaking of Michigan, I have one of the two wonderful island ladies, very, very accomplished members of our island community here, who actually went to the University of Michigan. I did not get in there, by the way. So, Danielle Rossetti, I'm very, very uh, jealous, <laughs> but very proud of you. And uh, equally accomplished is a uh, now retired judge, Elizabeth Barrett Anderson. Uh, now, Your Honor, I should say. retired for. Uh, yeah. Four or five years. Well, so I was, was going to say, for, so former judge, former attorney general, <laughs> former senator, senator, always awesome. Oh, you're so sweet. A, a very, very devout online shopper, I, I may say. I uh, well, when it comes to Christmas time, you know, what else is there to do but there to shop go. online and wait for the packages to come? In fact, we got our own peel box at our location, so no very more nice. no more waiting in line. There, and, and yeah. equally accomplished is uh, Danielle. Danielle, it's been a, several years since I've been able to interview you and, you know, the fine work that you guys are doing down there at the court, so it's very nice to see you. Yes, good to be back, Jason. Thank you for having us. Okay, uh, we're going to talk about everything that's going on, going on with the Justicia Award, you know, uh, Law Week, Law Month is coming up and everything, but uh, Your Honor, I wanted to say, since um, it has been uh, several years mm -hmm. since you've been on the bench, how has retirement been, and uh, what has Elizabeth Barrett Anderson been up to in that time? I'm a full-time grandmother and wow. a full-time companion to my husband, who's also retired. It, it's been great, Jason. I, I knew it was time to retire. I put 40 years into the people of Guam, and, and it was a great career. And, and I still continue, actually, to do some work. I'm the chairman of the Criminal Injuries Compensation mm. Commission, so I still do work there. And the Judiciary of Guam has asked me to help out on... Uh, law revision, so I still keep active. Retirement's mm. nice, though. Okay, and then was it uh, you and my dad um, when you, you were both, did you both serve at the same, were you both rookies in the legislature at the same time? Yeah. Republicans in a coalition majority with Don Parkinson as speaker. Yeah, and Mark. Those were days. Mark Forbes was one of the elder statesmen. Mark I've got Forbes. a picture at my house of, of that class of senators. Oh, it's it was great. yourself, Angel Santos, Mark Charferis. Tony LaMorana. Tony, Tony uh, Willie uh, Flores. Bloss, yeah. Dr. Mike Cruz. Yep, Larry uh, Casper Bauer. Uh, yeah, it's a... Uh, you guys were like the, the 1926 the, Yankees, man. And the infamous uh, hot dog and chili fight. I remember that. <laughs> that, that that's not on YouTube, but you, you may have to Google that because it was amazing. Okay. There are stories. Yeah, Danielle, uh, one of the, the great honors I know that the, the entire court system you guys have down there, the judici ju judiciary, I always have a hard time saying that word. Is J -O -G. J -O -G. The, thank you. <laughs> this is why you were so missed in public service, Your Honor. But is the Justicia Award? Uh, it's it's uh, very distinguished, um, very justified. So, um, what exactly is the award, and how difficult is it a process to determine who that is bequeathed upon? So, thank you for that question, Jason. The Justicia Award is is a award that we honor um, annually during our Law Month uh, celebrations. Um, we really uh, try to identify and recognize someone who has fostered the legal um, experience in our community, uh, both in the judicial process, as we've had past recipients uh, recognized, you know, our judicial officers, such as our most recent recipient, uh, retired Judge Barrett Anderson, Yee. and organizations as well that um, give back to the community in the legal way, the legal community, um, and fostering that, you know, we've, we've recognized the Guam Chamber of Commerce, we've recognized Inafa Malik. Uh, so the nomination process is, is ongoing right now, but we really try to reach out to get folks recognized uh, during this time of the year. And, you know, as I'll share a little later um, about some of our other law month activities, we are excited to kind of, you know, be out of this pandemic mode uh, to get things moving back uh, on track with uh, how we have been doing Law Month for, for now, uh, since 2008, I guess it's almost 16 years. So. I always enjoyed covering yeah. the color run for you guys every time you did that. N yes. Nothing nothing finer, I gotta tell you, as, as a sports journalist, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, than watching a bunch of lawyers get sprayed with color as, as they dash in 5Ks and everything, highlight of my career. Okay, so Your Honor, you know, uh, yes. the legal profession on Guam, it's, it is it is naturally competitive, but it, but it's also very, very collegial. You, you are men and women whose, you know, professionalism, um, you know, exudes itself and, and you're mm -hmm. all scholars of the law. What did it mean to you and what was your reaction when you found out that you were being named a recipient of this award? The uh, Chief Justice then, uh, Chief Justice uh, Carbolito called me in the morning. I was in the kitchen cleaning my refrigerator <laughs> when he announced it and I was I was totally, unex it was unexpected, it was a shock and and yet it was something that I'll be very honest with you, Jason, I, I think many members of, of the bar uh, hope and, and wish that maybe someday they'll get that kind of recognition. Mm. And I still get goosebumps when I think about um, my being selected and being honored among other uh, 
uh, judges, uh, Justice Janet Haley Weeks, uh, uh, Justice Peter Seguenza, who's uh, deceased, mm. very, very good friend, uh, Cristobal Duenas, and then to add Elizabeth Barrett Anderson to that, that pot is just a humbling honor. It, yeah, it's very, wonderful. very justified. It, it, mm. Yeah, I was really surprised. Yeah, yeah but, but yeah. to be able to, to stand among your peers that way and to, and to be a noteworthy member of our community. And again, you know, your LinkedIn profile, you know, you've done so many things as a public servant. And um, again, your knowledge of the law is encyclopedic. Your love for the island is, is unmatched and everything. So I think, I think uh, Danielle, an excellent choice, obviously. Thank you so much. OK, so um, am I able to nominate someone, Danielle? I, I can't put Esquire after my name. You can, because you, know, you earned it. Uh, but, but if I, as either as a broadcaster or just as a proud Guamanian, if I know somebody that I feel has contributed to uh, the practice of justice on Guam, am I able to do so? Any member of the public can submit nominations. Uh, and we can send the nominations to our Director of Policy Planning and Community Relations person, uh, Sarah Elmore Hernandez. Uh, information can be available on our website. But no, you don't have to be an attorney. You don't have to be a judicial officer or a judge. Uh, you can nominate, uh, and your nominations will come through to the committee. And uh, the, there is a once the nomination timeline, I believe right now it's April 7th. Mm -hmm. So we want to get all those nominations in, and it's a 250 word limit uh, nomination that you can send in. And uh, the committee reviews it and makes uh, a determination, and the Chief Justice will then uh, determine who the recipient will be for the year. Speaking of an honor, I'm, I'm sure the uh, Chief Justice, you know, when, when, when he or she, you know, makes that announcement and everything like that to, again, to bestow that honor up, up upon a member of the legal community. I mean, that, that's incredible to give them that kind of recognition. Yes, and, and you know, when we had uh, the ceremony, so in addition to the recognition by getting that call from the Chief Justice, uh, we do have a Justicia Award presentation ceremony. And this year we, we will have another one, but I was honored to be the MC uh, for the master Mistress of Ceremony for, for the Aww. presentation to Judge Barrett Anderson. And Hopefully at that, that time you're on. does a great job. <laughs> Absolutely. I've known so Danielle it, for a while. It was, uh, Excellent it was very humbling and rewarding to see the support and you know everyone coming out and really the true words that were spoken about the selection process. So we look forward to getting nominations in this year and uh, hopefully making a another good selection for And I'm, the I'm assuming your honor in, during that presentation and during that that award ceremony uh, you were not cleaning out the refrigerator <laughs> and and the the baking soda was not there at that time. <laughs> I, I was a little bit more presentable. <laughs> <laughs> well that, that that is public service too yeah. as well. You know you've also been uh, been an amazing trailblazer because you know March of course is Women's History Month and you mm -hmm. know you're uh, the first Chamorro female attorney uh, admitted to practice law in Guam, mm -hmm. the first uh, female attorney general um, and the longest serving AG. So what does it mean to you to be able to, to break that new ground and then to, to inspire and to encourage, you know, young women that said, you know, like, I, I see her and I, I see what she's yeah. doing and, you know, like, I want to do that as well. You know, I, I didn't set out to break new grounds to be first at this or first at that, but I grew up with a mother who inspired me, Conception Cruz Barrett, who mm -hmm. was a first in her own right. So I thought all women were like my mom come to find out that, uh, no, she was the first in that generation. And I just continued, I was inspired by her efforts, her education, her commitment to public. Oh, my mother loved politics. She loved the public. I hated politics, but I went into it because- You I, got pretty good at it. <laughs> <laughs> I knew the importance of a political career mm -hmm. and the importance of uh, doing work for the people of Guam. I mean, that's what inspired me. And it, mm -hmm. it, it's what keeps me going even in retirement when I'm called in by the governor or the chief justice to do work. Um, yeah, I, I will always have that love for public service. Excellent. Okay, Danielle, is there a theme for Law Month that we can continue you know, this work and inspired by her honors, you know, um, like work? We got about a minute more. So like, let's talk about what's going on with Law Month. Sure, so our Law Month theme this year is uh, Cornerstones of Democracy, Civic Civility, and Collaboration. So throughout the month of April and perhaps through May, we will have some law month activities to include, of course, our race judicata, which we will have. Um, and we'll share that information on the dates. It's going to be on May 13th. We will have our Justicia Award presentation. We are also going to be bringing back our fairy tale mock trials, so we are excited to have the kids come back into the courtrooms to. Those are always do fun. Yes. Okay. May, may I ask? Can you give us like a little sneak peek of what the fairy tale will be this year? Because I know uh, Chief Justice Robert Torres. Every time he would come on the set, he would always be so enthusiastic about saying one year they did 
the Three Bears. I think one year they did a Star Wars theme and everything. But it is a wonderful vehicle to get young people interested in the law. So we've got a couple of mock trials. One is obviously uh, we've got the Three Bears and Goldilocks, right? They're suing Goldilocks for bad manners. Uh, we've is that got a class action lawsuit if there's three of them? Would that qualify, Your Honor? Uh, no. no. Okay. <laughs> no. That's personal injury. Um, nah. <laughs> you know, we've, got, we've got the Harry Potter. We've got Superman breaking and entering, right? Mm -hmm. um, so we are excited to have a number of our public and private schools uh, come out this year to you really teach them about, you know, the legal process. And mm -hmm. that's always been the intent of this uh, most, one of our most favorite law month activities, right, uh, throughout the course of the year. So. Definitely excited to see that coming on with and mm. along with our ratio Dakota. Of course, during the pandemic, we never stopped doing Law Month, right? Yeah. We continued, and so uh, we are just now excited to kind of open up a little bit more this year. So you will stay tuned for more details on uh, uh, the rest of our Law Month activities. All right, we have lots of friends at the court. Uh, Danielle and her honor, the very honorable Elizabeth Barrett Anderson are just two of them. And we congratulate all of you and your colleagues, uh, retired or otherwise, or continuing yes. to practice on, on the work that you have done to make Sure, the practice of justice here on the island, um, you know, is as strong as ever, is a uh, interesting, viable career for those just like looking for something to do and they want to contribute to Guam and everything. I think with the fact that uh, both of you and under your leadership, um, you've made it a very, very thriving career. So um, a very, very amiable work. Thank you, thank Jason. You. Thank All right. Thank you. And uh, Biba to the judiciary. I, I said it right. See, there you go. <laughs> that's, that's the way you want to get law month started. All right. Please stay tuned because there, there is much more hotspot coming up right after this. All right. Her Honor and Danielle, like after that first interview in the, in the first segment, they were about to bolt and go like have some awesome Thai food right across in Compadres. But uh, Your Honor, you were talking about something that, uh, that kind of concerns you with law month coming up is the number of people that are actually getting into the legal profession on Guam. I think we've uh, we in the legal profession have seen over the last decade and a half the uh, lower number of our island children and, and high school graduates or college students going into law. And I think a, a large part of why we don't have more of our island residents going into law is because about 20 years ago the University of Guam, for valid reasons, pulled back from giving ProTech scholarships in the legal profession because we had a wealth of returning uh, graduates coming back to Guam. I'm a ProTech scholarship graduate and so is Danielle. And a requirement of ProTech is we come back mm -hmm. and pay back the ProTech by service to Guam. So if 20 years ago University of Guam started pulling that back, my fear was we're going to see a shortage and we are there now. We have a shortage of uh, local residents who have come back in the legal profession. So I really thank you for this opportunity. So it's not even a brain drain. It's like they, they, they just immediately went to the States and stayed there. Stayed there and did not go into the legal profession. Mm -hmm. And the ProTech scholarship has that you come back and, and return service. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I would like to encourage the University of Guam to think about reopening ProTech again because we have a shortage of, of lawyers in, in the territory. Mm -hmm. um, so what we saw was gonna happen when we turned into the 21st century in 2023, we see that shortage in reality now. Okay, so Danielle, a fin final word is yours. You know, really what we do is, as part of our law month activities, when we teach kids about the justice and the legal process, right, we encourage those kids that are in mock trial to become uh, attorneys, so go to law school, but encouraging them to come back. And so we do offer internships at the judiciary, but clearly we are not seeing the local students coming back, expressing interest uh, in the legal profession. And I, as a recipient of the ProTech Award, many years ago uh, found that very uh, helpful in, in helping me uh, pursue my legal career. And I'm back on the island and serving at the judiciary and had the pleasure of working with this, uh, uh, with your honor here. And so. Uh, it's great. I, I encourage young students to aspire to become attorneys. We need more attorneys in but, the and Jason, but, it, but if there's a scholarship out there, mm -hmm. our high school graduates are going to go for that scholarship, no matter where, where it's at, whether it's medicine, law, or, or, or dentistry. So if we have a scholarship program back in full force, then I can guarantee you it'll take another decade, but we will have the flow of returning graduates 
and to rebuild and to strengthen our legal community. And there you go. It yeah. needs to continue. So, ladies, thank you so much, and congratulations once again. Food for thought. Um, it's time for some real food because it's just about lunchtime. So thank you for watching, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow right here once more at 11 a.m. This is The Hot Spot. Have a good day.